dear students today i'll discuss on isotype switching and antibody diversity okay i'll tell you about the isotypes of immunoglobulin molecules and how they are generated in our system now immunoglobulins are generated or secreted from b lymphocytes b lymphocytes are developed in the bone marrow through a process called hematopoiesis now from bone marrow after the generation of b cells they come to blood and in blood they move from uh, blood to lymph lymph to blood and the receptors present on the b lymphocytes if encounters an antigen then the b cell gets activated and activated b cells are called plasma cells plasma cells secrete immunoglobulins or antibodies and once activated plasma cell can secrete up to 1000 immunoglobulin molecules per cell per second now what is the structure of an immunoglobulin molecule it is composed of two heavy chains or long chains and two short chains or two uh, or light chains each light chain has a molecular weight of 25 kilo dalton whereas each heavy chain has a molecular weight of 50 kilo dalton Thus, an immunoglobulin molecule uh, molecule has a molecular weight of one fifty kilo dalton. This is the end terminal end of the immunoglobulin molecule, and from the end terminal end for both the chains, one hundred ten amino acid residue sequence varies among different immunoglobulins, and this region is called the variable region of immunoglobulin. And variable region is responsible for binding to an antigen. That is why this region is also called antigen binding domain or FAB, F A B. That is fragment responsible for antigen binding. And the rest part of the immunoglobulin is called constant region. Okay, why? Because after one hundred ten amino acid. to the till the end that is up to the carboxy terminal domain the sequence reveal that five basic sequences can be present at that region either it will be alpha or gamma or delta or mu or epsilon and this region is responsible for mediating biological activities that means when an immunoglobulin binds to an antigen this complex is removed by the uh, with the help of the constant region part okay and that is why the amino terminal domain is called the fragment responsible for antigen binding and the carboxy terminal domain is called fragment responsible for mediating biological activities now each light chain is joined to each heavy chain by interchain disulfide linkage and two heavy chains are joined together by interchain again interchain disulfide linkages thus four polypeptides remain together and this molecule when present on the b cell surface is called membrane bound immunoglobulin molecule or b cell receptor b cell receptor is slightly different from the secretory immunoglobulin immunoglobulins in what respect in the respect of the c terminal domain in case of b cell receptor a transmembrane domain is present which is rich in hydrophobic amino acids okay and that region helps the immunoglobulin to remain bound to the b cell surface when it is secreted that region is no more needed so secretory immunoglobulin lacks that region and if we look into the immunoglobulin structure then we will see that several homologous regions of 110 amino acids are present in both the heavy chain as well as in the light chain and about uh, 60 amino acids form a loop interchain disulfide linkage creates loop like structure in the homologous regions now if the constant region sequence is alpha then the immunoglobulin is called iga isotype when it is uh, the constant region sequence is of mu it is called igm when it is of delta it is called igd when the sequence is of gamma then it is called igg or when it is uh, the sequence is epsilon the isotype is called ige and on a b lymphocyte surface will always see igm and igd these two isotypes no other isotypes are present on the mature b cell surface only igm and igd these are the two isotypes which are found in membrane bound condition now b cell can be activated by two ways okay b cell activation takes place in the presence of an antigen now the uh, activation can be thymus dependent or thymus independent thymus dependent means 
for the activation of B cell, direct help from TH cell. TH cells are called T helper cells. They are a kind of T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes means these lymphocytes have developed in the thymus. When the B cell activation needs help from TH cells, that procedure is called thymus dependent B cell activation. And when B cell activation does not need the help of TH cell, it is called TH uh, independent or thymus independent B cell activation. Now, I will first tell you thymus independent B cell activation. Thymus independent B cell activation is non specific, okay, that is irrespective of the B cell receptor. And thymus independent B cell activation takes place either in the presence of lipopolysaccharides or in the presence of molecules having repetitive structures, like in bacterial flagellin hmm. or if repetitive carbohydrate molecules are present then they may activate the B cells and this activation does not need the help from TH, TH cells or T helper cells. Now B cell activation can be of thymus dependent that means uh, B cell activation needs direct help from TH cells as well as cytokines released from TH cells also needed for this activation. What happens? In case of thymus dependent B cell activation, the receptor present on a B cell first binds to an antigen, then it internalizes the antigen, it processes the inter, uh, antigen and then presents the antigen on its surface. And TH cell with the help of a receptor present on its surface called T cell receptor recognizes that foreign peptide presented by a 2 MHC molecule. Now, on recognizing the foreign peptide presented by MHC molecule, the TH cell gets activated. It secretes some small protein molecules which are called cytokines. These cytokines now activate the B cell and B cell will be converted to plasma cells and memory cells. Now, thymus dependent B cell activation takes place in secondary lymphoid organs like lymph nodes. This is the structure of a lymph node. We can divide the uh, lymph node into three parts. The outer region is called the cortex, the middle layer is called paracortex and the innermost layer is called the medulla. And in the cortex region, B lymphocytes are arranged in concentric circles called primary follicles. And B cell activation, since B cells are present in the primary follicles, B cell activation takes place in the, in those follicles in the cortex region. Now what happens? Once a B cell encounters an antigen, it will engulf it, it will process it, that means the B cell is getting activated. Now the B cell will move towards the germinal center. And what is germinal center? as the B cells getting activated, they move towards the center of the primary follicle and that center is called the germinal center. Now as the B cells are dividing, they continue cell division for several days, B cell receptors are also develop in each of the B cell. Now during the development of B cell receptors, a mutation takes place at a very high rate in the variable region of the B cell receptor. This mutation is called somatic hypermutation. So a clone of our population of B cells have developed in the germinal center and these cells are called centrocytes and each B cell has a slightly different B cell receptor in uh, with respect to the variable region. Now they have to interact with the antigen again to get a survival signal. Now there are many uh, follicular dendritic cells present in the primary follicle. Follicular dendritic cells, they are not actually dendritic cells, but they look like dendritic cells and they have long projections. On the long projections, they bind to the antigen antibody complex. Now these B cells or centrocytes, they compete with each other for binding to those antigens presented by the follicular dendritic cells. Now the centrocytes which are bound to the antigen presented by follicular dendritic cells, they only get the survival signal, rest of the cells die by apoptosis, clear? So from the pool of B cells, only a few are chosen with high affinity B cell receptor for that particular antigen. 
Now what will happen? The selected centrocytes have to interact with the T helper cell again. Okay, and this uh, if this interaction will induce class switching or isotype switching in the B cell. What is class switching or isotype switching? We know that on the surface of a B cell only IgM and IgD, these are the two isotypes present. Now direct interaction with the TH cell will lead to the uh, replacement of the mu sequence by either alpha sequence or gamma sequence or epsilon sequence. That means isotype of the immunoglobulin will be changed, keeping the variable region same. Okay, that means the newly produced immunoglobulin will have the same specificity for the same antigenic epitope, but the constant region will be changed. Now once the centro selected centrocyte interacts with the TH cell, it is getting that signal. Now it will be converted to plasma cell and memory cell. Plasma cell will secrete specific antibody or immunoglobulin or a specific isotype. Thus thymus dependent B cell activation is a long process and it generates memory. Also class switching or isotype switching takes place in this activation. Now why isotype switching or class switching is so important? Because as I told you, the constant region of an immunoglobulin molecule is responsible for mediating the biological activity. And class switching ensures that the variable region remains the same only the constant region is replaced by any one of the other isotype sequences. Okay, that is what is happening. Biological functions, since biological functions of different isotypes differ among themselves, okay, keeping the variable region same, only changing in the constant region will ensure that the secreted molecule will do its job properly. Now, what are the factors needed for isotype switching or class switching? Number was cytokines. Cytokines are low molecular weight glycoproteins and they are secreted from many lymphocytes and other effector cells of immune system and they function as signaling molecules and also direct contact between two molecules, direct contact between two molecules CD40 and CD40 ligand is very important in case of class switching. presence of interferon gamma IgM will be changed to IgG whereas in the presence of TGF beta that is transforming growth factor beta IgM switches over to IgA that means the mu sequence is changed or replaced by the alpha sequence whereas in the presence of interleukin 4 okay the uh, interleukin 4 switches over IgM to IgE now direct contact between CD40 and CD40 ligand is also important in class switching. CD40 molecule is present on the surface of B cell whereas CD40 ligand is present on the surface of T helper cell and in the absence of CD40, CD40 ligand interaction class switching does not take place. Okay. And it is evident from a disease, immunodeficiency disorder called hyper IgM syndrome, X linked hyper IgM syndrome, where TH cells do not express CD40 ligand. So, in the absence of CD40 ligand, in those patients, it has been found high amount of IgM and very less amount or almost no other isotypes. Okay, so, interaction between CD40 and CD40 ligand is very uh, important in case of class switching. Now, in 1976, Susumu Tonegawa and N. Hojumi, they first proposed that the V and C regions of an immunoglobulin are encoded in different genes. Okay, and now we know that if we uh, look into the heavy chain, starting from 
amino acid residue 1 to 94. This much amino acids are encoded in a gene segment called V. Okay. From 95 to 97 amino acid residues are encoded in a gene segment called D. Whereas 98 to 113 amino acid residues are encoded by gene segment J. So, the variable region of each heavy chain is encoded by three gene segments V, D and J. And these three gene segments join together to form the variable region of an immunoglobulin molecule. This is called VDJ recombination. And in case of light chain, only V gene segment and J, J, J gene segment, they join together to form the variable region of each light chain. Now, uh, in chromosome number 14 of human, this encodes the germline heavy chain DNA. Okay. And there are 51 V gene segments, 13 D gene segments, 6 J gene segments and 8 C gene segments are present and they recombine to produce the heavy chain mRNA. Now I will tell you how recombination takes place in the heavy chain gene. Okay. Now as I told you there are many variable region gene segments. Now two separate rearrangement events take place here. One D gene segment joins to one J gene segment producing a recombined gene segment called DJ. Now this DJ gene segment it joins with one of the variable or V gene segments and produce the VDJ gene segment. And in the RNA once it is done the RNA polymerase transcribes the rearranged heavy chain DNA. Okay? And in the primary RNA transcript what is present a small leader sequence VDJ gene segment followed by two constant region gene segments C mu and C delta. Now these two mRNAs will be translated okay, and uh, mu heavy chain and delta heavy chain will be produced. Similar rearrangement will take place or recombination will take place in the light chain genome okay. and it will go through the same process only difference is in the light chain genome, the D gene segments are absent. Only the V and J gene segments are present there and VJ joining will take place and the mRNA will be produced where VJ and either lambda or kappa sequences are present. Now the mRNA, when the, all the mRNAs will be translated, the nascent polypeptides, they will join together and form the either IgM or IgD and it will come to the surface of a B cell. So there are many V gene segments, many D, G, D gene segments and many J gene segments and any one of the V gene segment can join with any one of the D gene segments and with any one of the J gene segments. So you can calculate very easily how many different variable regions can be developed from all these gene segments. It is in the order of 10 to the power 6. Okay? So in our system, the variable region diversity is in the, in the order of 10 to the power 6. Now I will tell you the mechanism how isotype switching or class switching takes place. Now if we look into the constant region gene segments, okay, then we will see that there are many switch regions present upstream of each uh, constant region gene segment except for C delta. Now what are switch regions? Switch regions are 2 to 10 kilobase pair DNA sequences which are present 2 to uh, 3 kilobase pair upstream of each constant region gene segment. Now class switching needs this switch regions, enzymes, it is also called activation induced cytidine deaminase or AID enzyme and also cytokines as I told you. Cytokine is the external factor which induces the class switching and in the germline cell, in the germline DNA, switch region and switch recombinase. These two components together carry out the recombination and switching over. Okay. Now what happens? 
the switch recombinase it recognizes the switch regions and it binds to the switch regions and it brings two switch regions in closure close proximity then with the help of other enzymes they carry out recombination thus a new or rearranged gene is produced where along with the vdj gene segment any one of the constant region gene segments are present and when it will be translated okay, that specific isotype will be produced now the light chain mrna and uh, heavy chain mrna they are translated separately then they enter into the rough endoplasmic reticulum lumen inside the lumen they join together to form the complete immunoglobulin molecule now the now the joining is different for each isotype like suppose for igm one heavy chain first joins to one light chain and two such half molecules join together to form a complete igm molecule whereas for igg two heavy chains first join together then two light chains join with that a heavy chain dimer okay so joining pattern is different from the rer this uh, complete immunoglobulin molecules then will come out as uh, vesicle forming vesicle they will come out from the rer or rough endoplasmic reticulum and it will fuse with the golgi apparatus and from the golgi through secretory vesicles they will be secreted outside this is the way how plasma cells first rearrange the uh, first rearrange the immunoglobulin gene and in presence of cytokines how the isotype constant region of a particular isotype is changed to other constant region isotype and then the complete immunoglobulin molecules are secreted out okay and the plasma cell can secrete almost 1000 immunoglobulins per second 